Hey folks and uh, welcome back to the shed and I apologize for not making any videos last weekend. Um, I was pretty busy with another project and it has a deadline so I had to kind of get on top of it. Um, but today, you know, I decided to go over a couple things about how I gauge, you know, the, the amount of insulation that I take off of a wire when inserting it into a lug on a Renogy controller. Um, in particular, the Renogy um, Rover 60 amp controller, and also how I crimp a uh, lug onto the end of a wire um, for fastening to, let's say, your bus bar or something of that nature. And I think that there's a lot of videos out there on this. I thought I'd do mine also and what I do and what I prefer. Um, also, I want to mention that. Um, in my next video, I've got some other stuff coming up as far as, you know, how I make a bus bar out of aluminum, um, angle stock actually. Um, I'm going to add another battery um, to my current configuration, you can see here. And then I'm also going to initialize a giveaway. And the giveaway is going to be more than likely uh, one of these little Renogy um, temperature and humidity sensors. It works with the Zigbee system. Um, and also the M1 controller, which I don't have, but I don't mind giving stuff away. There's going to be rules to it, of course, in order to adhere to YouTube standards. But um, let's go ahead and get started with um, how I strip a wire and how I gauge that. Okay, stay tuned. Okay, so this is the controller I was talking about. Um, it is another additional um, 60 amp controller that I have by... Uh, Rover that I'm going to use in a future project here this summer, which will be pretty fun actually. Um, so to start out how I gauge how much wire to strip off, how much insulation to strip off the wire, basically I, first of all we got to take off the old cover plate here, excuse the arm. This is not the greatest screwdriver, I hope I don't strip these screws out. But basically, we take this cover off first and set it to the side. And then, it doesn't really matter which one we need to use here, but we'll just use this lug here. And I like to unscrew it, okay? Now, what I do here, is I take the wire, with the insulation on it, And I insert it right into where the lug's going to go. Now, sometimes you got to loosen up that lug quite a bit, okay? Especially when you're using like this four gauge wire like I do. And then you want to push it all the way up in there, okay? Once you know that it's bottomed out in there, you want to go ahead and take your lug and you tighten it back down. Now, remember, don't do this while the panel is <laughs> activating the controller. Disconnect the panels, disconnect the batteries, all that stuff, you know? get it all set up. Now I just kind of snug it up because all I'm going to do is make an impression on the wire. Okay, we we'll take that lug all the way out. You can see the red down in there if you look really close. And um, see if we can hold that up a little bit more. But you can kind of see down in there, the wire's in there. And essentially what I do is I pull that out. And you can see right here where the... Uh, yeah, Kind of hard to see there. Anyways, there's a mark there from the lug. Now, what I do from there, is I take, um, I like to start with these here, and I go just maybe a sixteenth to an eighth of an inch above that mark on the top of the lug there, and I just start making a little bit of a cut there, okay? Spinning as I go. I don't want to push in too deep because I don't want to mess up any wires. But I can see where I kind of got most of it done. And I twist as I pull off. That kind of puts a little bit of a twist in the wire. And they all kind of stay together. Now at that point, you can take the uh, wire. And you can put it, insert it right up inside of the lug there. And voila voila, bada boom bada bing. Now you know that you're not going to be getting the lug on top of the insulation at all. You're going to have good contact. You're not going to have any wire showing, um, bare wire showing here. It's the way to go. One of the most common mistakes I've seen folks make 
when they're complaining about their controllers overheating is that um we may as well just put that lug back in um the, it, the, one of the most common mistakes i see them making is when they put the lug in and they don't take enough of the insulation off or they take too much off but when they don't take enough off some of that rubber is underneath the lug and then it adds resistance and then that wire and the controller re really seem to heat up right there and it can cause a fire the other thing that i see happen a lot is that um if they take too much wire out then you're going to see bare wire down here i just hate seeing that i it just seems to me like it's one thing you can eliminate pretty easy so that's kind of the general idea. Then I snug it up and um, we, we're in there really nice and tight now, okay? I could have snugged that up more, but we're going to go on to a different demonstration about how I put on the... Uh, um, one of those wires kind of got loose there. How I put on and fasten using a... Um, what I like to use is a hammer crimper. It's my favorite tool. Let's get into that now, okay? Okay, so... What I like to use the, the, the my favorite hammer crimper right now is the T the T Mech T E M C T H zero 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 seven. It's by uh, Temcoin Industries, I believe it is. Um, Temco Industries, sorry. Super solid tool, made in America. Um, can't go wrong with it, really. Now, I just ordered these up because um, I ran out of them, so they're still in the box here, but I've got some lugs here for some uh, 4 AWG wire, which is what we're using today. Whoops. And um, we'll organize that later. Going to go with the red um, heat shrink tube, um, just because we're running a red wire right now. Why not? Now, I don't put that on until afterwards. Some people do it differently, but, you know, for each their own, long as it works well in the end okay now what I like to do is make sure those wires are nice and tight I like these with the flared ends because the wires go in really nice at that point and I like it now I could have taken a little bit more off of that and I think I'm going to so basically we're just going to start from scratch I don't like messing around with a bunch of stuff here and we're going to go over here just kind of clip that like that I like to leave a little bit of the rubber on because it kind of holds all the wires together so I don't get that stuff everywhere, the rubber insulator. Now what I like to do here is I take the lug and I kind of put it right up to the wire to where I know it's going to go in that far, right? And then I take the corner of the lug and I push it into the wire. I know it's kind of hard to see what I'm doing, but I push it in so it makes a nice little indentation there. And again, it's going to be hard for you guys to see, but there's an indentation right there. And then I take my clippers again, and right on that indentation, I just make a little mark, and then I slowly kind of go around, nice and gentle-like, because we don't want to clip any of the wires. We want to have the integrity of the wire left in place. Now, with some of this soft insulation, you can just twist and pull right off. I save these because I use them for spacers and whatnot on other projects. And I'll show you what I do with uh, some of those another time on another project. But at that point, boom, we got a nice, nice fit just like that. It works beautiful. And kind of what I do there, one thing that's nice about the, uh, the this uh, hammer crimper here, is that it basically has got like a, uh, you know, like these little indents or uh, terraced, uh, oh gosh, I don't know what you'd call them really. But the, the, the lug can fit right up against it. And then I kind of put that in and make sure it's nice and snug in there. And then once that's nice and snug, I can put the wire in to the end right here, just like that. And then we'll go to hammering. So... Let me go show you what I do, because I like to hammer on a nice hard surface like concrete, okay? Okay, so you can see I've got the uh, lug in the hammer crimper already. And then what we'll do is we're just going to take the wire, and we're going to insert it right into the end of the lug there. Just nice and easy like. Get that to where it's nice and snug in there, but not moving everything out of place. And then what I do is I kind of... Once I get there, I use my single jack hammer. And I make a nice tamp just to kind of get everything to settle in. Okay? Perfect. Just like that. Now, from there, 
want to give it a good solid whack. You want to send this baby home, so to speak. Okay. Give it another one just for fun. Okay. The spring in that comes out once in a while, but it doesn't make a difference. Now, you can see there, it's got like a nice little indentation there. It almost looks like a crosshair or bullseye. Um, that's what we're looking for. It's nice and tight on there now. Okay. There it is. That's how I use a hammer crimper. Favorite tool. Less than 20 bucks if I remember right. And works better than the hydraulic crimper, crimper in my opinion. A lot smaller anyways. Easier to carry around. And also um, works a heck of a lot better than your standard leverage type crimpers. Um, it's just a solid fit. Okay guys. Let's move on. Okay. So for the last stage, you know, we're going to do a little bit of a heat, heat shrink tubing here. Now I, I just, I, I usually wait till afterwards. So I'm not worried about it. Some people like to put it on before and let it hang out. I, it slides right over like that though. And then I like to set it up to where, you know, you can see where it starts to elbow right there. And I like to kind of go right up to about right there is my spot. Now today I'm using a DeWalt um, rechargeable heat uh, or heat gun, sorry. And um, the thing I like about it is cordless. And you know, you guys, I want to remind you that all these projects that I'm doing out here, they're all run from solar power, man. And I couldn't be happier just to like being out here doing my projects, you know. But um, anyways, let's get to it. So what I like to do is I start in the center and I rotate around and I go towards the edges after that. And that way that heat shrink's got somewhere to go. Ooh. You can see what I'm saying there. Just start in the center. Keep moving it around. You want it to be nice and even all the way around, right? Almost starts looking like a bow tie there. Then I just start moving towards the edges a little bit. You can see I'm getting a real nice fit there. And if I remember right, this has got the adhesive backing on the inside of it to really help it seal up. Kind of an anti-corrosion type deal and anti-moisture also. Yeah, it does. You can see some of that. Well, I can see it anyways, but some of that glue is kind of oozing out the end there. And that's another reason you want to start in the middle and work your way out, you know, get all that stuff moving around. Now, I probably put that heat shrink there just a little bit too close to the edge. You can see where it's, you know, might interfere with the lug a little bit. But for the type of batteries I'm using, I think we're going to be in good shape. Oh, I don't like that. Hold on. If I really get unsatisfied with it, I can always go in there with a Jacko knife and trim her up a little bit. But I think we're going to be in good shape with this one. I'm going to keep on applying heat. It might shrink up to where I want it too. Okay, nice and snug, feels really good. Okay guys, so that's how I go about, you know, stripping insulation off a of wire. Um, it doesn't work in all cases, but in a lot of cases it does. And that's how I do the wire crimping. I really, really like the hammer style crimper. Um, reason being is it's small, it's compact, it works really, really well, and it's inexpensive. Um, now, like I was saying when I was making the video, you know, all of this is going through a Renogy solar system. I've got Renogy, I've got eight 100 watt um, Renogy panels, um, feeding a Rover 60 amp um, controller made by Renogy, of course, and then a Renogy 2000 watt inverter. I couldn't be happier with it. Um, for folks out there knocking Renogy, I, I I sometimes want to wonder if you're just not hooking it up correctly, man. Um, not following the instructions or or what. I, I'm not really sure. I know that I've had some pretty darn good luck with it. And I want to remind you also that in my next video, um, I'm going to be doing a little giveaway here. And I've got more giveaways coming up in the future. 
Um, we're going to be giving away this uh, temperature and humidity sensor that works with the Renogy M1 system. Cool little trick here. It also goes with the um, the smart relay, so if something gets too hot, it turns a fan on, etc., etc. I might give this away with it. I haven't decided yet. It may be a separate giveaway. Um, of course, I'm going to wait and kind of get together with all the rules of YouTube to do that, so we're all nice and legal. Um, and I want you also to check in on my next project. I'm going to be making an, um, an aluminum bus bar, and I use aluminum because it's really available. And it's also, you know, you got to oversize it because it's not as conductive as copper, but it works. And I'm going to be using um, angle aluminum, um, which is, I think, going to work really well, actually. And uh, we'll do that in the next video. Um, so stay tuned, guys. Thanks for checking in. And I'll catch